Shalom and welcome to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker. And a very special day today as we visit with John Ramirez on the day of his official book release, Armed and Dangerous, the ultimate battle plan for targeting and defeating the enemy. John Ramirez, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Rabbi, for having me. It's a pleasure to really be on your show, and uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to meet you, sir. Thank you so much, and you as well. John is an internationally known evangelist and highly sought-out speaker who for more than 16 years has been teaching believers around the globe how to defeat the enemy. He shared his powerful testimony of being miraculously saved as a high-ranking satanic priest on It's Supernatural, The 700 Club, TBN, Daystar, and more, and we're glad to have him here on Revealing the Truth. And we share the program lineup on WNDTV with Sid Roth from It's Supernatural. So, so yes. glad to have you. You're a part of our broadcast family. So we're glad to have Thank you, you so as a part of our program. John, Amen. you grew up in Puerto Rico as a, uh, one of many children being raised by those practicing a form of witchcraft. What, yes. was, what was that like for you? Yes, it, it, it's, it's amazing because I was born in Puerto Rico. Uh, my parents immigrated to the South Bronx of uh, the South Bronx in, in the Bronx, part of the South Bronx in the Bronx, which was like it was like tor a tormenting place to grow up. The, and when we talk about back in the seventies, the burnout Bronx, you know, I mean, buildings were burnt out from everywhere. There was gang gang violence in the streets. I grew up in that kind of environment. So when I came back, when I came from Puerto Rico to the uh, United States, we went, we went straight to the Bronx. Uh, I came, I came, actually came here at, at the age of one. And, uh, and my family, on my dad's side of the family, it, it was a line of witches and warlocks into a spiritualism, Santeria, and Palomar Yumbe. And so I, I grew up in, in an environment of, of, of seeing supernatural beings in my home, witchcraft, demons, uh, rituals, going to uh, witchcraft parties, doing ceremony, cleansings, and so on. Wow. I mean, what, would the, what was this like? It, 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 it became, you know, one of the fascinating things that the devil does is, is, is he makes things cultural. He makes things cultural. It, 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 in every culture, there's always a demonic situation going on. He makes it cultural. So in my, in my family, you know, we were Hispanics. We were uh, Puerto Ricans, Hispanic. So e either way, you were Hispanic or Dominican or you were Puerto Rican or you were from South America. We made it a cultural thing that this is something we practice because of our ancestors practice it. Our families practice it. It just ran to the bloodline. Uh, practicing witchcraft and doing lighting candles and and, uh, br and killing chicken animal blood sacrifices and so on and so on. So it just became something like hey, like going to church. Did you ever have any sense that this was not right? It, you know, it, there was never there was never a sense that it wasn't right. It always there, you know the the, 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 the thing was they, they would say, hey, you need this to protect yourself. These are your guardian angels. These are your protective spirits. These these this symbolic these symbols these statues. Uh, even going to witchcraft party, going to demon church. This was so cultural. It was so engrafted in our, in in our, in our bloodline. It was so engrafted in our family that it was something to practice. And then when we did witchcraft to people, we were just saying we're just doing witchcraft to that person and try to destroy that person because we're just protecting ourselves. John, how prevalent are the dark arts around America and throughout the world? Let's just put it, Rabbi, I'm going to say this. The devil came out the closet, is all over the TV, is all over the media, is all over the politics, is all over the, the music industry, and everything is just ramping. It's in our face. They're not hiding it anymore. I mean, between Super Bowl, uh, these ceremonies that you see, the, the, the Illuminati's, you see all these things going on because there's, there's 21 rows to the dark side, the number 21 belongs to the devil. That's his number on his side. And, and you see all this thing going on, and the church has gone into the closet. No one wants to talk about it. No one wants to dress the elephant in the room. We want to sugarcoat it. We want to sweep it under the rug. We want to say, hey, the devil is just on Saturday mornings. He's the cartoon with the red tail and the horns. How did we get to this slumbering state where evil is so pervasive that... You know, when we look at the fallen angels, we look at Satan, who was given great wisdom and beauty. 
we look at mm -hmm. the one-third of the angels, and the Hebrew text reads that by the abundance of his traffic, meaning that Satan went to every angel and quoted five different I wills. The book of Isaiah tells us what they are, beginning with I will ascend to the throne, mm -hmm. I will ascend to heaven. And these angels fell. Now, one of the things we know about angels is they're not omnipotent, they're not omniscient, and they're not omnipresent. So, not at all. So, but we also know that angels uh, are spirit, and mm -hmm. that they, we see when Jesus was casting out the man who was soiling himself and barking and was chained, and he said, what is your name? Because we're given dominion over that which has a name. And mm -hmm. he said, our name is Legion for more many. We know that Legion is a military term in Rome, meaning three yes. to 6,000. Mm -hmm. occupying one space. There's a Talmudic teaching in Rabbinical Judaism that says, ask the question, how many angels can fit on the head of a pin? And we look at them as spirit and they can be, occupy so many because spirit doesn't take up space. There's not a space time continuum in exactly. the spiritual realm. And so it, three to 6,000, and we know a certain amount of the fallen angels are held in the abyss in captivity but mm -hmm. there are those that still roam this earth that are still doing the work of Satan while he is in the atmospheric heaven, having access to earth and access to heaven still mm -hmm. to this day until Michael cast him out to mm -hmm. the final, to the next fourth abode, which is the mm -hmm. earth. He's still in that atmospheric heaven, petitioning the throne, bringing an accusation against you. And yes. he's got to be frustrated because what he keeps hearing is as he petitions to God and says, hey, how about John Ramirez? And, right. G and Jesus says, don't worry about him. Dad, put him on my account. I've got him covered. It's got to, fr that. Got to frustrate him. <laughs> it's they got to go migraine. A migraine. <laughs> <laughs> so he's giving him a migraine. That's exactly right. Like Jesus did in the desert, in the wilderness, when he quoted Scripture three times and frustrated him. You know, oh, I got to go lay down. I got to put cold cloth on my head. You know, this guy's driving me crazy with this Word of God stuff. <laughs> so, you know, when we look at this picture, I don't think that we have a concept of the demonic. I don't think we have a real grasp. We look at uh, the Francis Frangipanes, and we look at the various authors who have tried to tell us about this clear and present danger. But you've brought this armed and dangerous message. You've brought this understanding of what this, this realm is like because you were immersed in it. It was your normal. What was that like in your normal? You, 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 you knew how to curse. You knew mm -hmm. how to align and have what we don't have as believers. We don't have dominion over the angels. God says in Psalm 91, I command my angels about you. Jesus even said, if I asked my father, he would send a legion of angels. God is the He's the commander of the legion of angels, the, the heavenly host or the army of heaven. But mm -hmm. these fallen ones, they do the bidding. They are serving the needs of the dark side and mm -hmm. are able to be, because of their fallen state, ordered and, and commanded and thrive because they're looking for targets and the dark arts tells them who the target is. It makes it easy for them. Mm -hmm. How prevalent are communities, are, are, are these hit? I, you know, I know you say that it's public now, but, mm -hmm. but the body doesn't recognize that as evil. They talk about the world, but they don't recognize it as pure darkness, as Satan's plan on earth. They're lulled into this false sense of security thinking, you know, my God's greater than this. I've got Jesus and... You know, I can't be demon-possessed because I've got the Holy Spirit. And two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. And I'm going to walk around cocky and proud because I've got the Holy Spirit. Well, mm -hmm. I can be demon-oppressed. No, I can, have, I can, have, can have, be oppressed and depressed uh, over a demon. A demon can control you from the outside, manipulate you, control you, because whatever doors you open, is to, whatever you entertain is what you're going to get. And whatever you invite is going to come to your home. 
and whatever, whatever, whatever situation you give legal rights to, it's going to take your rights and it's going to take your real estate. It's going to take your spiritual real estate. And we need to understand that we need to wake up as believers and understand there's a devil to fight. There's people to set free. There's captives, people captive in, in the demonic world. I was a high rank devil worshiper for 25 years. I ran with the kingdom of Satan, from Satan or not. I would sit in my home and talk to the devil. He would show up in my house as a form and an appearance. And I would sit with him and talk to him all night long and get my get my uh, my information, get my messages, get my assignment, how to go after project and take over regions in the spare realm. Because if I'm able to take it over the spare realm, I'm able to control that region and nothing move, nothing's, nothing happens, let's isolate so. So you had command over the demonic yeah you know, it, it, it's it, it's an amazing thing because there's nothing that we can command in the demonic the demonic give you they give you the leeway so you can command and think that you're in charge so because and that's the way they can use you and manipulate you because like we say they need a body they they they, they need they need humanity in order to operate on this on, on the earth round so in other words so they give you this imagination thinking hey you know what We'll, 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 play with, we'll play your game. You can control us. You can do this for us as long as you do what our bidding. As long as you do our bidding. You know, it's a funny thing. I used to go to, dim, I used to, go to demon church, uh, demon church from, the, from the 7 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So we used to get demon possessed. Demon come down as medium. The demon come down, drink like a, a whole pint of Bacardi, uh, a whole bottle of Bacardi. You wake up out of your demon state. You're not drunk. But then the demon tells you, hey, when you go to clubs and when you go to bars, don't drink too much. Well, gee, we just drink a whole fifth. Manipulation, control, fear, factor. But the devil is real. His kingdom is real. And, and the Bible says that they, even Jesus said that it's, that it's, even the, the, the kingdom of Satan is not divided. They're running ranks and authority from the second heaven to the first heaven, principalities, demonic regions, I mean, demon, uh, territory spirits, familiar spirits, is all there. As you went deeper and deeper what was your life like well i lost my whole childhood because i was i was dedicated at the age of eight to the demonic world ceremonies uh, rituals demon church i didn't have a childhood so my, my my whole my whole situation i was being groomed and i was being groomed by warlocks and witches in santeria spiritualism and palomanume to become the third high rank devil worshiper in new york city and we, from new york city to miami haiti in Cuba and back to New York City. That was that was a sector of, of the ring I was associated with, and I was groomed until I became third high rank devil worshiper. I mean, I lost my conscience. I, I I lost my conscience. I had no heart. I would do witchcraft. Any person I need to do witchcraft, I would give people miscarriages to witchcraft if I had to because the baby represents the Church of Jesus Christ in the womb. So you kill it at the womb with the witchcraft. I mean, all the stuff that I did is under the blood of Jesus Christ. I am a forgiven person. I'm, God have mercy on me like he did with Paul and many others in the Bible. And God now today, he's using me, Rabbi, to expose the deeds of darkness and how to fight back and be the church of Jesus Christ of the book of Acts. Not, not the phony church, the church of the book of Acts, the real church. You were so far down the path that you were, I'm sure, considered yourself to be committed, driven, focused, and in the right. What was it that came against you that allowed you to see a glimpse of the light even in the depths of darkness? It, 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 no, it, 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 you know, it wasn't the church because the church was anemic, it was spiritually anemic. The church was, and thank God the church, the church at large was spiritually anemic. Thank God not all churches, but the church at large was spiritually anemic. They had no spiritual warfare. They had nothing to fight with. All they had was scripture that they didn't even believe. You know, so there was no way Christians would come up to me and Christians would say, oh, could we talk to you about Jesus and all that stuff? And I said, OK, yeah, open it up. See what you have to say, because I know the battlefield was in the mind. If I can capture that person's mind, if I can capture that person's mind and I can control his heart, I had I can recruit that person to the dark side. So because I was able to do these things and I know that t taking territory first, whoever strikes first spiritually could take the territory of that person and disarm that person and put a spirit of doubt and unbelief on that person as you communicate with that person. You know what the Lord said? The Lord said, okay, this is, this is you that evil. I'm going to do so. Only the first glimpse I had that I heard, the, I was remember I was watching uh, uh, one of these in the morning, a crazy TV show, a uh, very popular TV show. I was watching in the morning because I came back from the night before recruiting people to the dark side from different clubs. 
And I heard the voice of God say to me for the first time in 25 years, son, I'm coming soon. What are you going to do with yourself? An audible voice. And I couldn't believe it because I knew all the voices of the demons and principalities. But this voice was so different, so unique, so refreshing, so peace in the voice. Then when I heard it, I was like, I panicked. And I looked to the side of my, of my, of my, of my living room and I saw the whole sky on fire. And then after that, after that whole vision happened, a month later, Jesus Christ took me to hell in 1999, brought me back, and that's how I got saved. Wow. So it wasn't through the testimony, it wasn't through, it was through an encounter, a uh, supernatural <laughs> encounter, that mm -hmm. Jesus encounter. met you right where you were in the depth of your darkness. Mm -hmm. What happened mm -hmm. after that? How could you extract yourself from the pit that you were in, surrounded with authority and people at your command, demons at your command, and all of a sudden you're taken from the darkness into the light? How do you transition out of that? How do you get out? It was a, such a supernatural transition in my life because I remember when I, came, I, when I, when I went to hell, I, I, was walking, I was walking the portals of hell, and hell, the ground breathes. Uh, the ground breathes in hell. It's like it's like the the ground takes a human form and breathes. And as I was running to the portal of hell, and I was saying to myself, I don't, I I can't die in this place. I can't, I can't stay in this place. Something got to happen. And then the devil showed up in hell and was trying to keep me there, so I would be pronounced dead on the earth round, my body. And uh, so the cross of Jesus Christ showed up in hell, destroyed the works of the devil. When I came back into my body, I felt like I was in the ICU. Someone was taking these electrical pa paddles and hitting my chest. And my, body, my, my spirit went back into my body, and, 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 I heard, and the Lord said, I'm giving you one opportunity just to repent. And that's when I went, when I repented that night in October, I repented in 1999. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my Messiah, as my Yeshua in my life. And then after that situation, oh my God, all hell broke loose because I left, I left the devil that I could see for daddy I couldn't see. And, and uh, the demons came from me, the witchcraft covenant people, they all from Haiti. From Cuba, Miami, and New York, they all got together and said, we have to kill him because he knows too much about the occult, and he knows too much secret, and his rank was the general in the kingdom of darkness. So they did so much witchcraft to me, I mean, to the point that I almost lost my mind in those 30 days. I would sleep during the day, Rabbi, because at night the demons would come for me, pull my legs, grab me by my throat, pick me up in the air, shake my bed, the room, the room will get cold. Jezebel would lay next to me at night, and I felt like the body would go into my bed, lay down. You could feel the presence of this animal laying next to you. All that situation happened. And then later on, the Lord made a stop. And what, he made a stop completely. And uh, he said, I just wanted to see if you trust me, you love me, and you're going to follow me. Wow. I can imagine. These are scenes out of The Exorcist. These are scenes out of Rosemary's Baby. These are scenes out of the worst of the worst of spiritual warfare that we can ever encounter on this earth. And you have the armies of hell rallying against you, coming at you with an attack plan, with a battle plan, but you fought back in faith. You mm -hmm. held your ground. You know, mm -hmm. you didn't launch an offensive move. You held your position. This is such an incredible cross. message to hold your position. Yes. When you hold your position, that's not a battle plan, that's not a battle strategy, that's holding firm onto the promises of God of what he showed you. Now, yes. once, once the enemy begins to pull back and adjust their battle plan, in this time and space, you have the ability to answer the call to develop your battle plan to not only resist the oncoming attack, because you know another wave of attacks going to come, but mm -hmm. to launch your own battle strategy to advance on the enemy and take back territory that was stolen from you, and that's exactly what you've done in Armed and Dangerous. You've created Amen. the ultimate Thanks. battle plan that Amen. you show the yes. reader. Hold your ground. Hold firm when this attack comes at you, like I held my ground for 30 days. I couldn't launch a battle attack. I couldn't launch another strategy. I could only Hold my ground. This is what God is asking us to do. Hold mm -hmm. your ground. Mm -hmm. And then, when the enemy retreats because they have to adjust their strategy because they're not winning, you're given an mm -hmm. opportunity to develop a battle plan. Now, you saw this kind of as uh, uh, the valley of dry bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Walk me through that. Uh, that's so clearly Israel, but yet you've seen it in another dimension. You've seen it in another way. 
Give me that perspective. Well, I, I see the, the, the chapter of the Drani of the Bible. I know there's some Israel, Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel uh, 36, 37, 38. I, I know that that, that was, that was uh, really uh, uh, God speaking to Ezekiel to, to, to the Valley of Dry Bones, uh, the dryness of uh, Israel at the time and whatnot, which is uh, it, it was an amazing chapter. But I, I also I, I also see that I, I see that in the church at large. You know, we 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 profess Christ. We 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 talk about Christ. Uh, we 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 believe in the baptism. We believe in the Holy Spirit. But there's a decay because of the compromising and and the compromising in the church today. Now we have taken the messages instead of preaching fire and brimstone because that's something that's going to convict people. I mean, if you see the apostles, so they were they were not popular. They were not liked. They they, they brought a message. The prophets of old were not liked. They were not liked. They were. They, they were martyrs because of the message, because of the message. Not today, we just got this popular, secret-friendly message in the church today. They make it look warm, fuzzy. Uh, you, do you want extra uh, marshmallows on your message? Do you want extra ice cream sprinkles on your message? And it's not, it, 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 it's, the church has come to a place of spiritual decay. And we need, and then, the, and then the, devil, and the funny thing about the churches at large is talking about the devil, but no one is confronting the enemy. People are dying of cancer. People are dying of premature death. People, people are uh, caught up with pornography beyond what we can imagine. Uh, the church is sick. The church or the dry the, the dry bone. Someone has to be a watchman on the wall and, and 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 grab the devil by the horns and let them know that the church is here and the gates of hell will not prevail against the church of Jesus Christ. You know, when you paint that picture where Jesus stands there and says, "On this rock I will build my church." The gates of hell will not prevail. There is a place in Israel at the uh, headwaters of the Jordan River, which is the uh, temple of Pan, the Greek god that was half man, half goat. And right there, there is a hole in the ground where they would drop the offering and, and the sacrifice into that hole, and it's called the gates of hell. And when you look at Pan, and you hear words panic, pandemonium, uh, panacea, all those are tributes to that false god Pan who mm -hmm. has authority and that fear factor. Mm -hmm. When you were talking earlier about uh, Santeria and the dark arts, within that culture you attach spirits and demonic to things, to articles to yes. clothing, to jewelry, to statues, mm -hmm. to pictures, mm -hmm. to, um, uh, wh what do they call them? Um, I'm trying to think of the name. Um, it, it, it will come to me. But people don't realize that they have things in their home. You know, we read that Paul, when he was in prison, people would send cloth to him to pray over mm -hmm. right? and send the cloth back because things attach themselves, both good mm -hmm. and evil. Right. You want people to take an inventory, kind of a warehouse uh, effect to take an inventory. We'll go go uh, room to room in their brains, room to room in their hearts, but also physically room to room in their lives. Yes. As to what it is that's become a harbinger of darkness, uh, an idol, uh, uh, something that's attached to itself. T take me through that process. Take our audience through that process. You know, one of the things that, you know, uh, when I left the witchcraft for when I left the witchcraft for and, and I went to follow the cross, the witchcraft for I had a hundred thousand dollars worth of witchcraft stuff from my house, items and, 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 and things that had ceremonial uh, significant in the dark side, uh, things that had uh, uh, played a role in the dark side, tools and tools and pictures and statues and stuff like that. And a lot of time, a lot of people, they, they think that this is, oh, this is harmless. I can have this at home. Oh, I can have this kind of music at home, and this is harmless. You know, what, you, you can have a dagger at home. You can have a, a spiritual dagger at home, and it's killing you spiritually. And when you don't kill and cut the rope, it's going to end up killing you spiritually. Because there's things that we have at home that are, that are idols. They think that we got at home that are strongholds in our home. That we got pictures on the wall. Uh, we, we got masks on the wall. We got certain, uh, uh, we have certain articles and, and, and artifacts at home that are demonic, that are pure demonic. And you're giving the devil the legal right over your home, over your family, over your marriage, over your children, over your finances, because you got stuff in your house that doesn't represent God. It's, a, it's an amazing thing because years later, I, I, I somehow I moved, I moved from one, the Lord blessed me to move from uh, the Bronx into Manhattan. And, uh, 
and I, and I moved, I threw everything away. And I had one cassette tape. I had one cassette tape at my house. I didn't know it was in the closet. It was somewhere in the closet. As I moved everything, I threw, I threw everything out. It was a cassette tape of devil, uh, demonic music in the cassette tape. And, 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 and things were not going too good in my house. Things were not really... I wasn't flourishing. I wasn't, and, and the Holy Spirit told me, "You got something in your house that is stopping you from God's best." Man, I searched my home. I find that cassette tape. I smashed it to the ground. I threw it in the garbage. And my after that, weeks later, I started to flourish. Things started to happen because the devil had a stronghold in my home because I didn't get rid of the situation. Not that I wanted to keep it, just accidentally and in the move, it came with me without me realizing it. It's just an extraordinary story. We're talking with John Ramirez, author of the newly released book, As of Today, Armed and Dangerous, The Ultimate Battle Plan for Targeting and Defeating the Enemy. This is real, my friends. Spiritual warfare is real. There's one-third of the heavenly host fell to earth. One-third. How many angels were there? How many angels are there? The Bible tells us myriads and myriads, myriads thousands upon thousands. Yes. And if you believe the words of Jesus that every child has an angel, that means that every living person who ever was and ever will be, that's the number of angels on earth. Today we have six or seven billion people. That means there's six or seven billion angels or many, many more. And one third of them is still billions roaming this earth, ah. mm -hmm. following the false counterfeit Satan. Mm-hmm. The oldest prophecy in the Bible, Genesis 3.15, says there will be enmity between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. If you don't know that prophecy, you don't know the battleground, you don't know the battlefield. Satan knows who's going to crush his head. He knows who's going to throw him into that lake of fire. And he yep. is putting off the inevitable, and he's going to recruit you. He's going to use you. He's going to advance his kingdom to defeat the return of Jesus because he knows his days are numbered. He knows yep. who's going to deal with him. He knows the person and how he's going to deal with them, he just doesn't know when. And so every day that he can reign this earth, every day that he can usurp man's authority that was given to us in the garden, taken away because of sin, every day that he advances his kingdom is one day closer to the return of our Messiah. And will you do your part in this battle plan? Will you develop a strategy and will you take up arms against the enemy with the sword of the Spirit in your hand? Will you cleanse your home, cleanse your heart, and cleanse your life, cleanse your mind with the Amen. washing of the word, the renewing of your mind? This is a book that will give you a battle plan. John Ramirez is with us today. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the battle plan strategies for you to take up arms against the one who would destroy your life. We'll be right back. Shalom. I'm the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, Executive Director of Ignatica Nation and host of the daily TV program, Revealing the Truth, seen live every Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time at www.ianbn.com and then replayed throughout the day and night via our website. All of our segments can be seen on the Igniting a Nation YouTube channel. Since our launch in January of this year, we've expanded our global reach to over 54 countries with a social media following of over 125,000. Our commitment is to bring you the most in-depth interviews with authors, subject matter experts, and thought leaders from around the world. We have interviewed guests from Israel, Brazil, England, India, and all across North America. All of our authors are featured on the books and media page on our website, www.ianbn.com. There you can find a direct link to the book you want to order, and we receive a small commission directly from Amazon. There is no cost to you for this service. In addition to our daily teachings and interviews, we make available to you the archive of all of the interviews on our YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram channels. Our live program is available from our homepage, and there is never a charge to you for any of this access. We made the decision long ago that we would remain a commercial free resource that would not be influenced by any pressure from any outside company. There are only two ways that we are able to continue to operate this ministry and provide you with the only live four hour daily Christian television talk show program. The first is through your support and tax deductible contributions to Igniting a Nation. 
These can be made directly through the donate button on the website or sent through the mail to Igniting Nation, 2700 Corporate Drive, Suite 120, Birmingham, Alabama, 35242. The other way we support the program is by offering you a unique opportunity to have access to over 10 years worth of teachings on a subscription basis. The teaching archives contains all of my prior sermons, Torah studies, prophecy in the news videos, and much more for the low subscription price of $5 per month. This subscription grants you unlimited access to over 800 hours of content not available elsewhere and is updated weekly with the most current prophecy classes. In addition to 20 hours of original TV programming each weekday, we invite you to join us live every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings for our Prophecy in the News classes. The times and locations are listed on our events page on the website www.ianbn.com. Every day you and I are faced with the challenge of where we will go to hear the truth. We are committed to bring you the only program of its kind that covers the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. We cannot do this without your support. Since we launched on January 5, 2017, we have aired over 300 individual teachings, interviews, and commentaries not available anywhere else. We are now working side by side with almost every major Christian publishing house to bring you the most in-depth feature interviews possible. Our one-hour features address every subject that affects the believer's life. We are hearing of salvations from the Middle East, Africa, and all across the United States. Lives are being changed every day, and we have only just begun. Our mission is to become your trusted resource and grant you access to the people, tools, and information you need to grow in your relationship with the Lord. You can help us by liking us on social media and through your financial support. We know you have many choices and who you support, but we are prayerfully asking you to consider helping us keep revealing the truth, true to our calling, to cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth like no other program available. Donate today and help us bring the message to the four corners of the earth. Visit www.ianbn.com and donate, buy a book, or subscribe to our teaching archives. Without you, we do not exist. Shalom and welcome back to this edition of Revealing the Truth, where we cover the headlines, the heartlines, and biblical truth. I'm your host, the Reverend Rabbi Eric Walker, and we're talking with John Ramirez, former general in the Army of Satan. John, welcome back to our program. Thank you so much, Rabbi. This, Thank you. This, this book, Armed and Dangerous, the ultimate battle plan for targeting and defeating the enemy. You step us through seven weapons of our warfare, starting with the name of Jesus. Why is the name of Jesus powerful enough to pull down every stronghold? I mean, the, 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 the name of Jesus is a name that is above every name, that every, that every, every knee should bow, every tongue confess on that name, that that name is superior than any other name. And if you have faith and you mix it with that name and you're a true believer, you can destroy cancer. You can destroy anything that has a name, diabetes. You can destroy anything that uh, uh, divorce. You can destroy any um, anxiety. You can destroy pharmacia spirit. You can destroy anything with that name because there's nothing like the name of Jesus Christ. You know, John, it's interesting that we see that the dominion that God gave us in the Garden of Eden, He told mm -hmm. us to to subdue the earth. Mm -hmm. Satan usurped that authority. And God made him the prince of this earth. We were called to be the prince of this earth. We were called mm -hmm. to have dominion as man, as Adam, Adam, man. Mm -hmm. But yet we lost that. But in Luke 10, 19, Jesus says to his disciples, of which we are, mm -hmm. I give you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing whatsoever shall harm you. Mm -hmm. Why do we not walk in that? Why do we not command? And I'm talking about command. Say to that mountain, be removed and cast in the sea. Why, why don't we do that anymore? It's because we have come to a place of complacency, a place of just, just uh, uh, with, 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 with the whole situation of unbelief. 
you know, it, it, we I can believe that it worked for you, Rabbi, but when it comes to me, well, you know, I don't know. I, I just see, you know, because we, we, we have become, we have minimized Jesus Christ to a, pure, to a mirror man. Jesus Christ is not a man that he'll lie. He is the CEO of the universe. We need to seek a higher and lift it up. And we need to walk in, into that into that authority, that freedom that God has given us that we can trample, destroy, and dismantle, uproot anything that opposes who you are in Christ Jesus. You know, it's so interesting that the the next weapon in your arsenal is the blood of Jesus. And we look at the blood as a sign, but it's actually a mark. And the word mm -hmm. mark in the Hebrew text is the same mark that was on Cain. It was the same mark that was on the doorpost of the house. Mm -hmm. Well, we know the mark on the doorpost of the house was the blood of the Lamb. We know that we are marked in the end times with the blood of Jesus. We bear that okay. mark. And we begin to think about the power in the blood, that the blood can be recognized by the Antichrist, by Satan himself, that if we are sealed by the blood of the Lamb, the same way that house was sealed by the blood of the Lamb, that the angel of death would not be dispatched by God. But yet we don't pray the blood. We don't take the blood. Something about the blood seems to be so foreign in the power Absolutely. arsenal. Mm -hmm. Tell, me about, has become, Tell me about the it, power it, in the blood. You know what? You know what's? You know? You know? You know what's? What, what, what's really demonic and crazy? I share. When I was in the witchcraft side in uh, 25 years in the demonic side, we 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 killed so much animals. I I killed so much animals. It, it just I I even lost count because we it was after the blood. And if we put if the people in the witchcraft, the demonic, the people that were in the Satan kingdom, put their faith on fake blood, fake animal blood. I mean, animal blood, not the blood that shed from cavalry, but this uh, this superficial, this this fake blood of animal. And we put our faith that whatever we do, do that blood, it was going to work for us. How much more that the blood of the Son Jesus Christ that He spread for us and I. And on top of that, we are under cover all around on that blood. Why are we making it obsolete in the church today? Because without the blood, without the finished work of the cross, without 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 that, we have no weapon to fight with against the spirit against the kingdom of darkness. So I, I the blood is to me the blood is the oxygen, the cross, every, everything that the Lord stand for, Jesus Christ stand for, is our weapons of our warfare. To me, I fight with those weapons all the time. I ain't changing my weapons. They're gonna change. Nothing broke. I have the answer. Where everybody's fighting with the question mark, I got the answer. I'm fighting with the answer to get my victory. And believe me, 17 years later, these demons, these warlocks, these witches are still throwing witchcraft on me. And if it wasn't for the blood, what would I be? You know, you're you're so right. We've seen so many fall for the counterfeit gospel, for the mm -hmm. counterfeit spirit. And for the mm -hmm. counterfeit Jesus. And it's a Jesus that is different than the Jesus of the Bible. It's a gospel that is wholly different than the gospel in the Bible. It is a spirit which is wholly different than the spirit in the Bible. But yet these spokespeople are so eloquent that they convince people that the counterfeit is real. And people yeah. are walking around with a counterfeit billfold. They're walking mm -hmm. around with a counterfeit gospel and a counterfeit salvation. And in the end when that's tested, the Bible tells us that over half the believers will take the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is has got to be something that should be a wake-up call, a clarion call to the believers to wake up because if you can't recognize the authentic, you're going to fall for the counterfeit. You know, the, one of the things, Rabbi, it, it's one of the things I share, even Paul in the book of Galatians, they preach any other gospel to you that it's not the gospel we preach. Let them be cursed. Let them be cursed. So today, today, people have people have taken away the presence of God, and they have fallen. They have fallen in love with the giftings, the gifts in the body of Christ, and the gifts without the presence of God. Anyone can take the gifts because the, the people in witchcraft knew magic. Moses in his day, he confronted the magicians. He threw his staff down. They threw their staff down. Their, their stuff turned to serpent. His stuff turned to serpent. But the power of God overpowered their serpent. When Moses turned the rivers into blood, the, 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 the demonic did the same thing. But our, our was the real deal. Our, we were the real the, Moses in our generation today. We got the real deal. They have the counterfeit. And, and I can take, I can take, uh, they, they can take the, the people. People think because they see the giftings in the church, they think that's the presence of God. They don't know the difference because they, don't know, they, they have lost their way. No discernment. 
Well, you're exactly right. You know, the one thing about that story in Exodus where uh, Moses turns the water to blood and the wizards of Pharaoh could do the same thing, but they could not turn it back. Right. And exactly. that's the real trick. And that's the real deal. That's the real deal, is that we serve the God that can turn water to wine and can turn it back again. Back again, whatever he wants to do. Whatever He's the he king. wants. He's the king. So then the word of God. People don't read their Bibles. People are gospel illiterate. They are biblically illiterate. They have forsaken the Old Testament for the New. When there is one author, one book, it's called the Bible, one author, his name is God, and mm -hmm. there were 42, 41, 42 scribes recording the Word of God, but they were not authors, they were recording the Word of God. How can we claim that the Word of God is uh, God-breathed, that the, the Word is God-breathed, it's for teaching, it's for reproof, it's, it's pure, it's perfect. How can we claim to believe in the Word of God but not ever read the Word of God? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's like the people that in, 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 in the body of Christ at large, they talk about the devil, but they're not confronting the devil. We talk about scriptures, we quote scriptures, we quote scriptures and everything, but we don't believe it. We don't step into it. We don't, we, we, we don't mix it with faith. God is married to his word. We, we can hold God accountable to his word. His word is real. His word is alive. His word is a two-edged sword. I, I even go further and say his word is a dagger. You take that word, you stab it into that devil that's trying to kill you. And you destroy that devil and you step out of the way, the devil get out of my way, but you're not going to steal my purpose, my destiny. You're not going to steal my home. The word of God. It, it, I, I remember when I first was going to a discipleship class as, as, as a new believer uh, 17 years ago, I, I came from hell to church. I actually literally came from hell to church. So, so, so I, they, they, used to put tabs on, they used to put tabs on my Bible, and I couldn't still, they said, well, go to the book of Genesis. I was in Revelation. I mean, I was just, you know, I was just learning stuff as I went along, but I, I trusted it. I believe, I accept it, and whatever condition state I'm in, this word is real, and it's going to work for me, and I live on that until this day. You know, you and I are both from the same place. I came to the Lord at age 44, and I wasn't smart enough to not believe every word of the Bible. And I'm a clear-meaning preacher, meaning I stick with the text. If it's not in the right. Bible, if it doesn't line up with the word of God, it does not line up. I'm not a... Uh, uh, we have a pretty story. I use the scripture to to be my commentary on scripture and show a common theme throughout scripture. And that's the power of the word of God. But then we come to this issue. And it is an issue. It is a stumbling block. And it is something that has divided the body so fractioned that it's cracked, it's broken, and it's laying in pieces. And that is speaking in tongues. What is mm -hmm. it that people don't understand about the true biblical power of speaking in tongues? I, you know, I, 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 it dumbfounds me because of, of people will believe on, on, on things that are so naive. On, on, you know, they buy a computer, they believe on the manual, on the computer. It's this, uh, they buy a car, they, they, believe in, they put their faith on the manual. They, they buy a, a refrigerator that has all kind of buttons. They put their faith in the manual that's going to work. But you can't, the word of God, speaking in tongues. I mean, even the disciples who speak in tongues. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than anybody else. Build up your inner man. Build up your life with God. Be strong in your, in, in, in your inner man. Because, you know, the devil is after your inner man. He, he, you, I am strong in my inner man. I have confronted witches in, in Haiti, I mean, not in Haiti, in all the Caribbeans when I went out to meeting, I got witches come out to me and say, I came to destroy your meeting, but because of my inner man, because of speaking in tongue, and I built myself in the faith, and I confront these witches, and the last one standing is me, not them there on the floor laid out, turned into pretzels. How does praise and worship change the atmosphere? Because this is an atmospheric battle. This is mm -hmm. not a battle against flesh and blood. This is a battle against principalities. This is a spiritual realm. This is an mm -hmm. atmospheric realm. Angels are spirit. Therefore, the fallen angels are spirit. Demons are spirit. And they mm -hmm. manifest themselves in the physical. They manifest themselves in the ethereal, the spiritual spirit itself which is intangible jesus even says that that look at my hands and look at my feet and look in my sides mm -hmm. the, the spirit the angels are not flesh and blood mm -mm. they don't have bones like we do 
the Spirit. The Spirit. And praise and worship. And they're two distinct concepts. Praise, Hallel. Worship, Shacha, bow down low. Humbled in the sight of God. How does this change the atmosphere? Oh, I mean, true praise and worship. Because today we got the radio going on. Which is not even worship and praise. It's just the radio. It's just noise. True praise and worship. It, it changes the atmosphere. It changes the environment of the condition that, you're, that, 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 that the situation is in. Not only in your life, but over your surroundings. Your surroundings. Your, your surrounding your home. Praise and worship brings the atmosphere. It, it just ushers to God's presence. You know, I would say praise and worship goes up and glory comes down. I mean, true praise, true worship. You know, I'm, I'm not a singer. I mean, if I sing, it probably start raining now. But, you know, but I have a, I have a true and praise worship heart. For the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, God didn't give me no 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 voice to sing music, but I can true and prayer worship in my spirit unto the Lord. I can be in a train in New York City. I can be walking down Broadway, and I'm in a spirit of true praise and worship. And we need to get back to that place as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn off the radio and get into the presence. You know, we sing in our spirit. Mm -hmm. It's what we're supposed to sing in the spirit. Right? <laughs> is that we're supposed to have this unction, this quickening, this something that cannot be contained, that comes mm -hmm. out of us. And, you know, I, I can't carry a tune, so I so associate with utterances and groanings. Right? Because when I <laughs> sing, it's like utterances and groanings in a language that only the spirit can understand. But I so appreciate the fact that God honors that and he hears oh. it. And it confounds mm -hmm. Satan because Satan can hear our verbal prayers in whatever language we're giving them in, but in utterances and groanings, in that prayer language, in the depth of our spirit, as we call yes. out to God, this is a language only heaven can hear and only heaven can interpret, and God knows <laughs> our prayers before we offer them. So why do we send a signal? Why do we shoot off a flare and say, hey, I've got this mark on my face and I afraid it's cancer and Satan comes along and whispers and says oh you're afraid it's cancer well how about my friend Job he says that which I feared the most has come to pass Do you know why because I heard him say this is what I feared the most so I mm -hmm. sent that to him because that's what he was afraid of and I'll mm -hmm. speak to you in your fear because I'm the father of lies and I will come to you and God is not the author of fear no and Satan is a oh. harbinger of fear because that's where we are weak. Yep, exactly. In our, in our it's, fear. A, it's a pharaoh. He will, he will, he will. And the thing is that we speak things into the existence. We speak things into the airway. We speak things that we give the devil legal rights over our words. And the devil will bind himself to those words. And he'll send a spirit of infirmity upon you, a spirit of fear upon you, to paralyze you, to stop you from God's back, to stopping you from worship in the spirit and in truth. And he'll capture here. He'll, he'll captivate he'll captivate yourself into a place that he can control you and dominate you and shut you up and shut you down. We not those kind of people. That stuff don't work with me. I turn around. The only fear I have, Rabbi, is is that I I will finish my race and when the day I close my eye, I made Jesus Christ proud. And that's my fear that I preach to the multitude and I don't be disqualified because I check inventory where I'm at, where I'm going, and what God is saying. There you go. And the last weapon in your arsenal is the pulling down of strongholds. How does well, that, that, how does that, for, you know, in order to pull down a stronghold, you have to confess, I yes. have a stronghold. Mm -hmm. yes. I have mm -hmm. that place in my armor which is weak, that mm -hmm. if the enemy hits me there, my armor is going to be pierced. And mm -hmm. the enemy is firing armor-piercing bullets at every single believer, and mm -hmm. we don't recognize strongholds. John, how can we recognize strongholds, and how can we pull them down? You know, a stronghold. You, you. Get, what are what are the weaknesses? What are your family tree? You know, uh, what is your family tree? I mean, a stronghold could be a situation. Say, like I give an example. Uh, my grandfather and my father said I was an alcoholic, right? My father was an alcoholic. You know, that's a stronghold. You know, and then and, and then that creeped into my family. I remember when I was in the demon world, demon days. Uh, I was going out and, and I was drinking like three thousand dollars a month. To three to four thousand dollars a month in liquor in different bars. Three to four thousand dollars a month. I was just drinking in every place, 
that had a pub, any place that had a lounge, any place that had a club. So that stuff was creeping up on me. A stronghold is a situation that, that you allow the enemy to get access of, to, 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 to change the, the, the shifting of what God intended for you to be. And in and, 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 and my life, the stronghold in my life was witchcraft. The stronghold in my house, me serving Satan, I had strongholds in my life. But God broke them all. And one of the mer one of the most deliverance things that happened to me, Rabbi, I remember that when I went to the baptism pool, we had about 70 something people that day was being baptized. And, and, and the, the amazing thing, I was the last one that came out to the baptism pool because I was so shy to come out. I, I was, didn't know what to do. And when they put me in the baptism pool, they brought me down to the baptism pool and brought me back up. I saw these big hands, went into the baptism pool and pulled out from 30, 25 years of demonic ceremony that was done to my body. I saw the, I, when I got out of the baptism pool, I told the, the people, hey, did you see the big hands? Did you see those big hands going to the water? They said, we didn't see nothing. But I saw them because God has set me free so I can go set the captive free. Strongholds in your life need to be brought down. We need to destroy those walls, the spiritual walls that are holding you back from God's best. Whatever it is, they're not from God. They're from the enemy. You know, it's easy to see chains, but it's not easy to see a bungee cord. It's easy, yeah. it's easy to be weighed down with chains, but we have this false sense of security that we mm -hmm. can't fall, we can't go, and we just keep going, and all of a sudden then it pulls us back. And we're astounded yeah. that we came to the end of the bungee cord and we get pulled back. You know, mm -hmm. You talk in the book that Satan tar targets our children, mm -hmm. that this is our weakest point, that our attachment to the fact that we have responsibility for our children, and we certainly have stewardship, and we have to mm -hmm. understand the relationship of God, God's entrusting us. How does Satan attack our children, and what can we do about it in this battle plan? Well, you know, I, I think I think one of the things uh, I share with my daughter's twenty, my daughter's twenty eight years old. I know the things that the, the enemy uh, attack her with because her daddy's out and about ministering, preaching the gospel, getting people set free, getting people salvation, getting people uh, come out of uh, occult practices, and so on and so on. So the enemy attacks my daughter. I only got one kid. I'm like the only Spanish smart Spanish guy. I only got one kid. <laughs> 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 the rest of the ones I know, I got like five kids. And, and what I do is I, I know strategically how to destroy, dismantle, and upward the things that are stopping my daughter's life, pa trying to paralyze. You know, my daughter suffered from uh, panic attacks. My daughter suffered from, at times, she suffered from uh, anxiety. Sometimes she suffered from, uh, you know, fear and yeah. stuff like that. So I know those are the things that the enemy is throwing so he can he can put the worry on me because that's my daughter. And I, like you said, Rabbi, you know, my I'm, God has entrusted me, belongs belongs to the Lord, but entrusted me with my daughter. So you need to understand, identify the, 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 the things that the enemy is using against your family and then destroy those things with the word of God, with the blood of Jesus Christ, with the finished work of the cross. Destroy those things. Be in pursuit of the enemy. Don't let, don't stay there on defense. And I think one of the things about the book, uh, the, the, you know, the amazing thing of, about, about my book, uh, Arm and Dangerous, is, is it, it, it's, it's, we in pursuit of the enemy to destroy every demonic attack of our families, our loved ones, our friends, our community. We're in pursuit and we need to understand how to pursue the enemy and dismantle and break down those patterns and cycles. You said bungee jump, right? Bungee jump, there's a, there's a form of bungee jump of the, the Christian that six months he's free and six months he's back on the same thing. That's like a bun. Those are those are they call it. You know, David Walkerson was my pastor. He called that besetting sin, and besetting sin. And he mentored me for three years. Besetting sin is, is something you free from three months. You free from pornography. Three months later, you back in this. You need to cut the rope and cut it once and for all and move on. And we need to do the same thing for our children. Lay hands, pray over them, anoint them, speak the word of God into their life. Speak the word. If you see things in your in your kids' life, go to renunciations. Renounce those things. Break those legal rights. Fill that with the Holy Spirit. Fill those areas. Like you said, Rabbi, fragment it. Take those areas. Make them whole. Shalom. Nothing missing over your family. Amen. Amen. John, we've got about a minute and a half left in this segment. Will you do me a favor and pray for our audience for deliverance, for healing, and for supernatural revolution, revelation that they need to mount up this battle plan and get this book, Armed and Dangerous, uh, Amen. The Ultimate Battle Plan. Amen. So, Father, in the name of the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, our Messiah, in the name we destroy. We attacking the devil from the third position city with Jesus Christ today in the highs of the highs of the heaven, the point, the point of authority that we have that he has given us to us. We destroy every demonic work, oppression, depression, suicide, premature death. 
Father, we destroy every demonic sickness, Father God. We destroy diabetes, cancer, Father God. We destroy every divorced spirit, my God, every demented spirit, every bipolar spirit. We destroy those things against our brothers and sisters out there under the sound of our voice. Father God, we smite the devil with the blood of Jesus Christ, Father God. We smite every demonic attack, every residue attack, we, every reinforcement we destroy, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, we dip arrows in the blood of Jesus Christ. We shoot them into the devil's camp and destroy every target, every generation of curse. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare and decree. Father God, Isaiah chapter 2, 5, a wall of fire, the same wall of fire you put on Joe, you put on us. The weapon form against it will ever prosper because Jesus is king and the devil is a liar. In the unmatchable name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen and amen. John Ramirez, author of Armed and Dangerous, The Ultimate Battle Plan for Targeting and Defeating the Enemy. Get a copy of this book and learn to take authority over the enemy in your life. You can do this. Jesus promised it. Luke 10, 19. In Luke 10, 18, he says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, and I give you <laughs> the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions oh. and overcome all the power of the enemy, that nothing whatsoever can harm you. If you don't know how to walk in that authority, this is the battle plan for you. Visit Amen. the Books and Media page at IgnitingAnation.com. Click on today's date, September the 7th, the release date of Armed and Dangerous, the ultimate battle plan brought to us by our good friends at Chosen Books. John Ramirez, what a blessing this was to have you on the program. Love to have you back on. And don't forget, give my regards to David Berkowitz. Yes, I will. I son will. of I Sam, will. who's now no longer son of Sam. He is son of the risen oh. Messiah, Amen. Jesus, Amen. Yeshua Amen. HaMashiach. John Amen. Ramirez, thank you so much for being thank with you, us. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank that, you so much for everything. Thank Talk you. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. And that brings to an end our live broadcast day, but that doesn't mean we go off the air. You can watch our rebroadcast here on INBN.com or Facebook Live for the next 24 hours, and then catch us on WNDTV.com. Now that Revealing the Truth is available from our good friends on the network of WND.com, from Joseph Farah, Dave Capellian, and the team over there, we thank you for affiliating. Uh, igniting a Nation and this program Revealing the Truth with WND TV and reaching 15 million on Roku. 7.5 million unique visitors on WND.com. You can tune in to us there at WND TV or catch us on our YouTube channel Igniting a Nation. We'll be back in the studio tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Central Time with the next edition of Revealing the Truth. Until we see you right back here in our live studio in Birmingham, Alabama, we wish you Shalom.